like to introduce David Savalano, who, um, when I was looking, starting to look for, with under programs, starting to look for speakers for the fall last January, um, I was asking, we we're talking to the group and stuff and looking for names and, and I was looking for the theme this year was more demos. Uh, last year we did business, this year is, uh, is uh, more art demos and the different, different media that we have. And he came highly recommended and I went down, I went to his website and then I ju jumped down a rabbit hole looking at his website and videos that he had and all of that. And I was thrilled when he accepted um, that to do the demo for, for November. And um, so he is a native California artist. He primarily, he's watercolor artist, does most of his work is plain air and he's a very accomplished teacher. And I can attest to that only from looking at his videos is really good. Um, so I would like to, without further ado, just jump into the, the play along. And if anybody has not downloaded the image or wants to play along, grab your stuff and take advantage of it. Um, so David, welcome. Thank you. Hi everybody. Um, let's see. There's a lot of art organizations here that I want to address and then, and uh, thank you for the, your updates from your organizations and uh, Christine for reaching out and inviting me to do this demo on travel journaling. I also call it travel sketching. And so have a talking head, uh, a reference photo, and then my workspace over here. So those are the three things that I have to present to you and we also have the chat function so if there's things that you want to have questions about we'll have someone who's going to moderate the chat right so <clears throat> travel journaling journaling and travel sketching i know it calls for travel journaling which means you know someone's writing something but what i'm going to focus in on today or this evening is more about the drawing on sketching and painting rather than the written word of part of journaling. So um, I do have some samples of uh, my journals that I keep when I'm traveling and hopefully uh, soon we'll be able to do a lot more traveling. And so in preparation for that, it's a good idea to uh, get your sketchbooks ready I'm going to show you some pages here from my sketchbook. I'm using ink pen, ink drawing, that's permanent ink, and uh, watercolors. So a little kit of watercolors that I keep with me when I'm out painting. Um, and there's, uh, I'll go over these books a little. So the kind of paper that I'm using, it's, uh, watercolor paper and the reason i use this is that i'm i'm sort of used to painting on watercolor paper so the sketching part is um lends itself to that i it's very predictable for me to use watercolor paper i've used other kinds of papers this the slick smooth ones and uh they don't have quite the feel and texture and and behavior and the properties so that watercolor paper so i primarily use watercolor paper. Um, you'll notice that there's no uh, spiral bound. It's actually, um, it's bound, uh, it's a bound sketchbook. So it, it's, it, we're able to lay flat um, and it doesn't, you know, buckle up like that and stay like that. It, it pretty much lays flat. So you could paint um, uh, pretty flat and draw pretty flat too. You could keep it on your lap and paint. Um, uh, this is a trip we did a few weeks in Greece. And these the, this is an air, sick ba air sickness bag that I drew a map on. They had a map and then I added the places that we traveled to by boat and ferry uh, for three weeks and uh, along <laughs> the Turkish border here and uh, the Greek islands here, so. Um, I'll just flip through these musicians. When I see musicians, I like musicians. Uh, 
I get them to sign the the sketch that I do of them, and it's, it really adds to uh, my experience and memories of uh, where I had visited. Here's somebody dancing. Um, I don't ride a lot, but I do keep all my tickets. Like this is a ferry boat ticket, and you just tape these in, keep them as you go along, and. Um, hmm. So ink and watercolor, very quick um, sketches. This is just painting. You go all the way across here with this. And there's nothing to interrupt it. So you could paint all the way across. The book is about the size of uh, uh, a regular piece of paper when it's opened up. And the pictures of the group of artists that I traveled with uh, in Greece. Um, here's another type of uh, sketchbook. It's made by Moleskine. Um, Christine, I believe we I sent out a uh, materials list. So you could download yeah. that if you needed uh, information on uh, the kinds of pens that I use, uh, the sketchbooks that I use. This one's quite old. This is 2011. So places that I go to. Real, sometimes they're just really quick sketches. They're just people. I have time to do this. And whatever strikes your fancy, so to speak. Um, I'm at a restaurant, I'll write down, um, this is in Sunshine, Louisiana. It's mm. over uh, by Baton Rouge. Fried green tomatoes, barbecue um, with fried grits, sensation salad, fish in papillo, I think it's like fish in paper, and a creme brulee. What a meal that was. Um, I took a picture of this and gave it to Roberto. So he says, next time I'm in, I get a meal. So I might take him up on that. Uh, music, different bands. And this is in uh, New Orleans. And I'm, I'm in there and I get the, the uh, have the musician sign my sketch. John Ellis Quintet. Wow. So it's these kind of things. I mean, connect with people. Um, the Tower of Power. Everybody knows that band is in the East Bay. Um, went to one of their concerts and got them to sign this sketch here. It's great. I, I drew the sketch in the dark. <laughs> During during their concert, you know, I had it on my lap, so uh, um, I didn't know what I was going to get till the lights went on. So. Mm. A lot of fun. I this is, I mean, you could take a lot of photographs, but how many times have you actually looked at the photographs in the last year? You could take hundreds of photographs and things that uh, I know I remember the things like. Uh, it was yesterday, a 4th of July parade, um, I sketched. So this is a good time to um, get out and uh, do some drawing and, and some sketching. Okay, I try to keep it pretty simple. Um, and in terms of uh, the pens I use, I use uh, permanent um, black ink pens, different types of nibs, um, a fine nib, a medium nib, and a, there's a medium one, and then a, a wider nib here. They're all permanent black ink, and uh, that way it doesn't run on the paper. You can put it down, you could put watercolor over the top of it, and it, uh, you could put a wash over these 
and they don't bleed. Okay, so there's different types. You want to use the I use the permanent black ink. And then in terms of um, paints, this is a little um, paint kit here that I have. It's got oh a dozen colors or so, some of my favorite colors. Um, and it comes in a little pack like this. And uh, there's a website that's on that material list. You get these. I use tube watercolor paints. Uh, and just squeeze that in there. And when I need more paint, just squeeze more in there and uh, keep it fresh. Um, you need to fresh it up. I just take some water and revive some of these colors in here. I'm going to do that now before I start. So I get some water in here. Try to get the paint a little juicy uh, before you use it. else oh okay so in terms of the brushes that i use um make sure that you have a good point this is a uh, synthetic uh number 10 round pointed brush and then i use uh also a squirrel mop brush um if i want to do a uh, simple kind of washes or something i i'll use uh the squirrel mop so watercolor brush, it's very easy and handy to carry this and this and a couple of pens and you're all in business with your sketchbook. So water brush. Well, that if there's any questions about the materials i'm happy to answer those as we go along um one of the most important tools i like to use is a viewfinder so i'll talk a little more about uh, using this viewfinder as we talk about composition a little so there we go oftentimes you're out and you're trying to choose a subject to, to sketch. And my advice is always, you know, draw and paint what you like. Um, there's usually some kind of a connection that you have to the subject that you're gonna do, either emotional connection or something surprises you. And there's no better way, as far as I'm concerned, than to try to capture that in a small little drawing, okay? You know, sketching, going out and sketching allows you to just to slow down and look at the world a little more closely. I know it's so convenient for us to go out and take our, our digital cameras out from our phones and, and snap pictures. But if you want to really take a deep dive into looking at something or observing something or trying to understand it, I, I believe uh, using uh, you know, your sketchbook and trying to draw and capture it it's not about how well you draw something. It's the, it's the act of going out and trying to do it. Um, you're all going to get better the more and more you do it. Okay. So um, the other thing about when you're out sketching or traveling, you know, and you want to do a little sketch, find a comfortable spot to go out and paint. Um, like sitting on a park bench, uh, a place where you feel safe, a coffee shop. Um, and the other thing is try to find some shade. So underneath a tree, underneath the overhang, inside of a building, uh, you don't want to paint out in the full sun. It's a lot more difficult to draw and paint in the full sun. And then the other thing about um, people ask me all the time, how much time do you spend um, on doing a sketch? And I have a general rule, it's called the 50-50 rule. And I use, you know, 50% for drawing and 50% for painting. So it's the 50-50 rule. And I generally spend maybe 30, 40 minutes on a, a sketch. And so you could look at it like, okay, 20 to draw and 20 to paint. 
sometimes your painting could go faster and you spend a little more time drawing. But I have found after 40, 45 minutes, um, I tend to overdo things. And what you want to do with your sketches is try to keep them fresh and make them look like sketches rather than finished you know, works of art. They're really only sketches. They're reminders of where you've been. And so to try to keep that in mind. And I use the 50-50 rule to do that, OK? Um, the other thing about uh, art, and what I'm going to talk about a little, is, is uh, composition. And in tonight's sketch that we're going to do, this is a, uh, a little restaurant in Carmel. It's called, um, I think it's called Le Bicicle, which is like the bicycle. And there's a little bicycle in the front window over here. And when I look at this sketch, it's, it's colorful and it has the flavor of uh, the mission style architecture that's in Carmel. Yeah. And <laughs> it's very colorful. There's some things that I would probably want to do a little different. Um, so drawing from a, a, a photograph like this, it's frozen in time. And the tendency is to copy every detail. That isn't necessary when you're sketching. Um, what you want to do is get the flavor of the building, the arches, uh, the, the balcony, the balcony windows, the shade, and then where my center of interest might be. Um, so that's when I use a viewfinder oftentimes to, when I'm looking at a scene is I use this viewfinder to determine how much am I going to uh, put into the composition. Is it horizontal? Is it vertical? Um, where's the interest going to be at? And so in this particular case, I'm looking at a vertical painting and the center of interest is around in here. There are some things that um, I'm looking at this photo that I would probably do differently now that I have a chance to look at it. But you could do this as well in the field. So um, I would make a change. And if you see the, the difference here, between I took a, a white pencil or pen and, and lightened up the shirt here, put the light shirt against the dark background here. And then the pants over here, the dark pants, I turned them in lighter. So light against dark is, is and it right starts to begin. It's, 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 you begin to see the higher contrast here. Just by changing the color, or taking out that jack green jacket and putting in something lighter. Okay, those are the things, and uh, also in the light fixtures in here, a little brighter. And so that's that's a very simple kind of change that you could do in the field. What I'm searching for is how to achieve the most amount of contrast in my center of interest here, and so you do it with values dark against light. Any way you could do that. Um, also, the use of figures. I like to put figures in my drawings and, and sketches to add scale and some liveliness uh, to a scene. So there's some movement and it humanizes it rather than just a, a building or a, uh, without any people in it. And I like to put in people and put people in the scenes where I'm drawing as much as I can. Okay. They may, these people are waiting in, to get in the restaurant. Two minutes later, they're going to be gone. So oftentimes I'll take a photo of the figures that are standing and then later on add the figures in my sketch or my painting. Um, so again, contrast, look for contrast, add the contrast. Okay. Okay, I'm going to pick up some notes here. 
Okay, so viewfinder, is it vertical? Is it horizontal? And uh, you could zoom in with this. This is a plastic one. You could make one out of uh, cardboard if you wanted to. It doesn't have to be one of these fancy ones that slides, but um, I've had this for many years and it's really come in handy to help me determine what is my composition. Where's my center of interest in this composition? Um, the other thing I want to talk to talk to you about before we start drawing uh, our subject here, our, our uh, restaurant scene, is how many times have you started a little drawing or painting and only to discover when you start drawing it, it doesn't fit on the paper? You know, this happens to me all the time. So what I want to talk about is how to get your composition to fit on the format. Yeah. So one way to do it is to obviously is to measure, have some unit of measurement. So for example, in this particular sketch or, or the photo, let's just say this person here, that's, that's the equivalent of, of uh, one unit, right? So when I measure how many units from, let's say the curb to the top of the building, I could measure that. I'll just take my pencil out here and measure. There's, well, I'll just do this. This is my measurement right here. So that's one. two, three, four. So there's four units high from the curb to here, to here, to the here, to here. There's four. And then coming across, one, two, three, three and a half. So now if I wanted to translate that, I'm going to get a pencil out and let me get my pen, this other pencil here. And uh, determine my format here. Let me, let me go ahead and draw my format out here. We talked about journaling, and you're probably wondering what these yellow pieces of uh, stick. When I want to save space to write something later on during this, after the sketch, I'll put these little sticky notes here to save the space underneath it to write on. So I could paint right up to it and um, not worry about uh, moving things around here. So let's just, I'm gonna put in a curb line here and measure. This is something, maybe it'll work though. Let's see. By the way, when you're out um, sketching and using something to measure with, use your thumb on a pencil to measure something and keep your arms straight out when you're measuring something in the field, okay? Use your thumb here. And this is the one unit. And let's say this figure was gonna be one unit. So I'm gonna put the bottom of the building, there's a curb and the sidewalk, and then maybe the bottom of the buildings say here. So I had four units. So I'm just going to arbitrarily say that this is going to be one unit, two, 
three, four. So there's the top of my roof. I'm doing this in pencil. You can see that. I'll go back over this later in, um, in ink. So when you're drawing along with me, here's the curb. And I'm going to put the double line here for the curb, top of the curb. So there's the top of the building. Here's the person, it's probably about here. So the next thing to do here is now we got this big rectangle. Let's break it down even more. So here's a rectangle and then a, a half circle on top of it. I'll put the top of the half circle there. Mm, here, here. And then coming from the center here, I'm going to put in this half circle. Whoop. I'm gonna put the ink in here now, you can see it. And above those half circles is another set of half circles, something like that. Here's the bottom of the the buildings right there. I like to put in a fairly heavy line at the bottom of the building. It's heavier than the other building lines. It just sets it on the ground a little more. So that's nice and dark there. It looks like they have a, a menu here. Here's our figure. We have a head, body, and then uh, the figure next to that person, like that.
So right away that establishes this doorway right here. Everything is gonna be dark in here. Um, the next part is the balcony that's above these arches and it looks like it stops about here. So I'm gonna draw a double line here to represent where the balcony is. It's like it's got some kind of floor in here. The balcony railing. Yeah, I'd say the doors, <clears throat> probably a pair of doors. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to put the roof in. And it looks like the, there's some red awnings here. Uh, there's a support post here and one over here. Um, the doors, uh, these balconies, uh, I'm going to draw, it's like it's a pair of doors. One, two, three, one, two, three. Mm -hmm. uh, looks like it has these two flags. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a flag that's out here. Looks like it's the French flag, red, uh, white, blue, white, and red. And just, and then I'm going to take this other flag that over here, I'm going to put it on the other side. Change it around a little. And come up here.
Oh, here's the bicycle. That's the name of the restaurant. So I'm going to try and draw this with some ovals, fork. Oh, the other wheel is something like that, the center. Got some kind of a basket on it. So basically, I just started out with the line drawing and then gradually now I'm going to start filling things in. Um, there are some lights inside here, um, some light fixtures. I'm going to indicate those, put a couple additional ones over here. Maybe another one there. And a couple more there. So put the light fixtures in. Looks like there's a planter box. Over here. And then the doorway. So David, can we ask a question? Say again. Can we ask a question? Sure. How do you decide which elements to put in and which ones to leave out? Lines? How do you decide which elements you want to add in and which elements you don't? Yeah. So the way I look, these elements are things like the doors and windows. Those are the basic elements. The ground and any of these architectural elements uh, are important. And then the figures. Um, actually, the big, they're, they're bigger shapes. It's the big window. Um, I know inside the window, there's, there's probably people sitting down or some other figures inside. Um, I could add those in later, but the first ones are the big shapes uh, that indicate where this is. So it could be trees, it could be a building, it could be a big lawn, whatever it is, it's sort of the big shapes. And then I start to break it down into um, smaller and smaller shapes to enough to define, um, you know, what the thing is. Um, so let's say this balcony here, I know it has some vertical balustrades on it and, and railing and stuff. I don't have to put in every one. I could put in a few in here to suggest it. And that's enough for a balcony. So um, I don't have to do everything. It's just some basic elements, some critical ones that help define what this is. So for example, um, this is probably some kind of a menu over here on this side, over here. Uh, I just want to indicate that by the frame. I can't put in all the writing. Um, or there's, there could be a sign or something that defines what the place is. So there's actually a little sign over here, but um, you can't really see it that well. So I'll just sort of indicate, you know, there's something over there, but I won't get a lot of detail in here. I sort of want to keep the detail in here and then suggest everything else as much, as little as I can to get the idea. So I'm not putting in curtains, say, for example. Um, just the bigger elements here to define the scene. Okay. 
I'm going to add some figures uh, as if they're either standing up or sitting down at a table over here. Over here. These are lights. So now the other part here is uh, there's a tree. So I'm going to indicate some tree leaves that are overlapping this balcony here. These actually don't look like leaves, but they sort of indicate. If I put a branch in, with a thicker line. Now, what's the best way to indicate these dark windows? Um, I'm going to put in some cross hatching with a wide nib and let's see what I have here. This one's a little fatter tip. And I'm just going to do some cross hatching. Uh, stay away from these lamps. I'm right handed, so I'm doing like this 45 degree angle line here of this cross hatching. Good heavy. Now, if I want to darken it up, I just go opposite direction. A few more lines, I could increase the darkness here. This is cross hatching. doors, I'm going to darken up uh, the door frames that are at the balcony uh, with a darker, thicker line. Then these beams underneath here. Mm 
The roof line, I'm going to also darken some thicker lines. How are we doing on time, Christine? We have about yeah. half an hour. Okay. You notice that I'm not doing, this is pretty much, it's called an elevation. So it doesn't really have any kind of linear perspective drawing to it. It's pretty flat. It's just the elevation of this, of this uh, restaurant. So it's not looking at it in, uh, on an angle. It's straight on. So this is the most simplest uh, way to draw a building when you're looking at straight on. It's a little more difficult when you get into the linear perspective and uh, one and two point perspective. This is by far the easiest, uh, simplest way to portray a building is when you're looking at it straight on here. We've got the figures, the lamps. sidewalk and the street. We pretty much have all the elements. I'm going to darken this up a little. Any questions at this point? Doesn't look like it right now. Okay. Just remind anybody, if you have questions, please put it in the, uh, the chat and we'll make sure they get asked. So I'm looking at this. Okay, I have enough information on here uh, as far as you know, doing this sketch and I have all the elements. I got the, I haven't added the color yet, obviously, but I do want to uh, now go ahead and, and put a wash over this building. Um, so I'm gonna get a sort of a beige kind of color, a little yellow ochre, And I know the building's white, but I'm gonna make I gonna make it warm. So I'm gonna put a very light light glaze of uh, light yellow ochre over this. I may have to tilt the paper a little bit so you can get an idea. Looks a little yellow. Let me get it. There we go. So it does have a little yellow, yellow ochre kind of glaze over it right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
I'm going to go ahead and uh, put in a fairly bright blue. It's bleeding a little, that's okay. tissue. So we have one question. Um, they're wondering if you sketch this building in Carmel, because it's uh, one of her favorite restaurants, and she knows that there's benches right across the street. I've done one across the street before. I haven't, I've done this from a different angle before, not straight on. It's looking up the street. Right. Yeah. How do you handle crowds? Here's another question. Mm -hmm. uh, so wherever that red is, I'm going to add it. So when I handle crowds of people watching me, say, for example, um, it took some time to get used to it. Um, most people, when they're watching you sketch, uh, they say to me, wow, I wish I could do that. <laughs> and oftentimes what I say to them, I said, well, it does take some practice, but you have to be willing to practice. Um, just like anything else, playing the piano or learning an instrument. Um, it comes, it uh, takes some time, but you got to practice. And uh, they're always curious about uh, the painting process and how long did it take you to do this? And I just tell them, uh, uh, it could take me longer, but when I'm doing a sketch like this, I try to not overdo it. So usually it takes me 45 minutes or something, but people are very curious. And as um, we are actually am ambassadors of art here, all of us who are uh, painting outdoors or painting in public and stuff, it is um, can be frightening at first, but I think when you're doing this, it's sort of personal. Go ahead and, you know, find a quiet spot where you're not going to be interrupted. Uh, but I'll tell you, as you get better, people are going to, um, they're curious about it. And so if you do have time, I usually engage them and tell them what I'm doing. I'm painting in this particular medium. And um, it's something with my sketch, I'm going to remember it. Um, so let's see, here's a blue. There's a little French flag. One, two. You're making this look very easy. Well, the drawing part wasn't easy. That that took some effort to do it. But the painting part is goes on so much. It's a lot more easier once you have the drawing done. Uh, 
I was curious about this green curb here. What does the green mean? Does anybody know when you have a green curb? I think it's 15 minutes parking only. 15? I think it's 15. Okay. Anybody else know? I'm trying to remember from when I had to do my driver's test a few years ago. All I know is don't stay there too long. No, yeah. oh, don't stay there too long. <laughs> Good idea. Good. <laughs> Take your advice. It's not worth a ticket, huh? Let me change colors here on this. This is such a small little palette. So we have some answers on the green. It's uh, it's temporary, but it's set by local ordinance. So oh. apparently in this image, it says 30 minutes. Oh, <laughs> okay. Thank you. You know, try and make a warm gray here. Um, like this, it's green. So, oh, there it goes. So we have another question. You're painting wet on wet now. Do you always do that? Um. Only when I need to <laughs> right now, because I'm not outdoors and the sun, I'm allowing the sun to dry this. It is a little challenging, um, but early on I'm painting wet on wet. And then as I'm getting into the detail, it's, um, it's more dry brush for the details. See if you can see this. It's oh, kind of changing more than one. Okay. So now there's about fifteen more minutes. Okay. Thank you. Blue. So you could paint these figures and all this detail with whatever colors you you like. Get some of these trees.
just have fun with this. It doesn't matter what the colors necessarily are. It's just that you want to achieve uh, the contrast. I have a couple of things. One is a technique question. Um, it's a cloudy day. Are you, hold on. I lost my question, the comment. Um, are you going to be adding, um, how much does the weather on the day impact what you're doing and how much license would you take? So are you going to add values with light and shadow? Yes. I mean, that's what I'm going to do right now, as a matter of fact. Um, I'm going to add some shadows in the windows to get them to pop a little more. And I'm going to take a cool um, purplish kind of blue. I'll mix it here. Let's see what I'm doing here. So those are like a purple. So let's say the sun's coming from this direction here. Um, it'll cast a shadow. This thing will cross a shadow like something like that. I'm going to darken all this with that same mixture. And you can see that, see it's like that. I'm tilting the paper so you're able to see these shadows a little better. So have you ever gone back to the same location and found it completely different and tried to, you know, or, you know, a different time of day? Yeah, I look at like early in the morning and in the afternoon because I know that, um, you know, the sun's obviously going to be at a, a different angle. And it'll have different uh, atmospheric colors as well. So. I'm going to darken this too while I'm at it. So we're just about winding down here. I'm going to add a little shadows in through here. Wow. So we have a, somebody was asking that you've studied with uh, Joseph, and I'm going to take a guess at these names, Zubovic and mm -hmm. Jerry Skitt. And they're wondering how they influenced your work. Um, I think in terms of the... Uh, necessity for learning how to draw. That's one thing. Um, the other thing would be the painting and values. Um, and then, you know, trying to judge color and values. That's where I'm at right now. I, I'm not a pure tonalist anymore. I mean, I'm more looking at the uh, you know, 
how color is interacting with what we're seeing here. So um, I'm adding more color um, to that, but I think the influence is the drawing part and the composition, um, definitely the tonal values create a big influence. Let me just add this here. The I'm tilting this up a little. It, the light's a little better when you do it this way. That's beautiful. Yeah. It looks wonderful. Yeah. Thank you so much for that. Did anybody try it? Did anybody play along? Yay, no. Anybody willing to show their image, their what they did? Show and share. No, I'm not getting any takers. <laughs> Some there's a few people like myself. I mean, I tried the drawing part. Not even gonna. No, I'm not gonna embarrass myself with how bad it was. However, um, it's definitely something to come back to. We're gonna take the recording and we're gonna make it available so people can play along later. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's one or two people that say they did. So that's great. That's great. That looks wonderful. I know I, for me, I love seeing how you can interpret. I always thought, no, you have to put down religiously what's in front of you. But no, there's a lot of room for your own personal in interpretation. Oh, I like that, Priscilla. Yeah. Good drawing. Um, to anybody who does try it, if they want to email it in, I'd love to be able to post them um, along with the meeting info just to show, you know, different interpretations of the same image. That'd be great. That was wonderful. Thank you very much, David. Did you have any, any other questions or, you know, you're getting a lot of wow, that was wonderful. So. It was definitely well, much appreciated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, don't be afraid and bashful with the color. Go ahead and pop it in there. It really, you know, these little sketches, it really makes it sing when you, um, I use colors straight from the palette here and not, not too much mixing, just full strength, wet and juicy color, pop it in there and uh, let it happen. That is wonderful. So when somebody wants to know where you're sketching next. Where I'm sketching next, um, I'm going out with a group of people on Saturday. <laughs> I'm gonna go to Point Richmond. And that's where I'm gonna sketch next. Um, if the weather's nice, I could set Saturday. Oftentimes I, I'll, uh, I've been taking the uh, ferry boat over to San Francisco and I, uh, take my supplies over there and find a place to, to, to paint there. So I've been painting in San Francisco the last couple of months. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Nice. So thank you so much for that. Uh, that was, that was wonderful. I, you know, I, it's make, you make it look so effortless, especially the drawing part of it. Um, and then you adding the color and makes it all come to life. Thank you so much. That was very informative. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, when you go, so somebody else is asking, when you go, do you go by yourself or do you go with a group? Uh, most of the time I'm by myself. Um, I go out on, I have a, a electric bike that I use and I carry all my art supplies, the, um, I have an easel, a tripod, the whole thing set up 
fits in my a backpack and I have a, uh, a basket on my bike. I carry all my supplies and paper and everything. And um, I'll, you know, bike around the city and find a spot um, to paint and then get back on the ferry boat and go home. So that's day at the office for me. Uh, I like doing nice. that. <laughs> nice. That's wonderful. Um, but this travel sketching, I'm hoping um, next year to be doing some traveling and uh, have to look at spots, you know, to go paint where it's opened up, you know, the countries that are allowing that to happen. So, so. I enjoyed myself and talking about, you know, travel sketching is, uh, I had a good time doing that. So, um, when you take when you take uh, my workshop, it I break it down even more, so we have time to practice and do critique and and learn from each other. So I I enjoy doing that as well. So thanks so much, everybody. Yeah.